Welcome citizens of the internet. I am Abraximus and this is Elementary Tangents on a General Cubic Polynomial. Some advice to my viewers. If your preconceptions about basic differential calculus differ from what I will present here, then uh, just try to evaluate it as a new idea with uh, potentially new insights. Um, also, if you think that this method is too trivial, I think that in math it is important to progress from simple to complex, uh, and as such I am content to do so. Some prerequisites I would use to motivate this are uh, an uh, affine geometric understanding of arithmetic and uh, some basic counting so that you can uh, really get your hands around the binomial theorem. If you do that, then uh, all of this will uh, make a lot more sense. Uh, barring that, this will be a self-contained video. You can just take the methods here as the fact that they work. Um, and uh, I will link the documents shown in this video for a copy and paste resource to use with GeoGebra, but I also recommend everyone write it out and stare at the basic computations involved. Uh, it's a very fruitful e exercise and uh, it will benefit, benefit you a lot to just do it by hand. Um, more links will be given uh, and references for further reading. So uh, let's begin. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define parameters A, B, C, D. I already have them here. Alright, and uh, then we're going to define uh, a cubic polynomial or cubic function or cubic poly number. Um, I might probably just going to say poly number instead of polynomial or function. Uh, if I, if you don't know what a poly number is, that's fine. Um, you can just think in terms of polynomials, and you'll be you'll be off. Not, uh, it won't be too bad. Um, but anyway, uh, so this is the general cubic right here with four different coefficients. They could be anything. All the computations on this page will be uh, shown in terms of the general cubic. However, uh, with GeoGebra, uh, we're going to be passing specific values to it. However, the nice thing about GeoGebra is that we can have those values just uh, oscillate. I like to have them oscillate at different speeds and on different intervals so that um, it extends the period of uh, when it's going to stop showing me um, unique things. So we'll, we'll get to see a ton of examples. Uh, one thing about cubic uh, poly numbers that you might be able to see is that uh, typically they have um, one min and one max and then they change concavity from like facing up to facing down or vice versa once. Um, and uh, we can move these things around, make them look nice. But anyway, um, so uh, we would uh, let's explore some elementary tangents on this. That that means that we're going to start doing calculus. Where do we uh, start with calculus? Uh, many people, the majority of people, would say that we start calculus with limits. Uh, but for this video, we're gonna avoid limits altogether. This is probably the last time that we're gonna talk about limits, uh, and only to say that they're not a part of this story. Uh, and they don't have to be. In fact, uh, doing it this way uh, opens a lot of exciting doors. Um, so, to start calculus, we're going to define the truncation operation. So, define uh, tn x cubic of removing terms of x to the n from the expression above that degree n. So, uh, for instance, t0 of x cubic of x is uh, just a, where we removed this because it is degree 1. Right? And then for this one, for the second truncation, uh, we removed this because it's degree 3. For the first truncation, we removed these because that's degree 2, that's degree 3. Um, and you might notice that if we just truncated uh, the third truncation, throwing away everything above degree 3, there is nothing above degree 3. So um, if you have a poly number of degree n and uh, you truncate it in n plus 1, you've essentially unchanged it because uh, there's nothing to throw away. So um, why do we care about these truncations, though? Why, why should anyone even bother? Well, let's look what happens when we graph them. If we graph the first truncation, it's not, it's not really that interesting, uh, but what we can see is it, it takes on the value of the poly number at the origin. Uh, but beyond that, it's not really anything that exciting. What happens if we put the second one? Much more exciting or sorry, the first truncation, this is zero truncation, but uh, much more exciting. This appears to be the tangent line to the the cubic at, uh, at x equals zero. Um, if you pause any of these particular values, then you would see that in fact this is the tangent line. Um, and uh, this, is a, this is a quantity that's quite exciting. Uh, we would, this, if we have access to this information, uh, not not just through the origin. In fact, we're, we're going to want it to be more powerful than through the origin. But 
uh, this is the kind of information that powers so much of the modern world today. Um, and so let's look what happens when we uh, put in the second truncation. That gets us a, uh, here, let's make this a different color. That could be a better color. All right. That gets us a tangent parabola at the origin. That's also very exciting information, though less well known. And uh, we're going to have a good time with that information. It's, it's very, uh, there's a very, very beautiful fact that comes out of these tangent parabolas to cubics. So, um, I, wow, just, I would just take a minute to look at this. Like that, that, is, that is some amazing stuff. Um, the truncation operation, aside with the binomial theorem, is really what powers this whole, this whole endeavor. So, but this restriction that we have, that it only is uh, approximating it at the origin, we would like to change that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to define a parameter r. I, I already have it up here. And uh, let's define a point. Um, what is this point doing? Ah, I see, yeah, I see. Uh, let's define the point um, at capital R cubic of R. All right, and so if we move R, let's just have that oscillate. And also, I'm going to turn these off. We have R. That's just some point on the cubic. Uh, ignore this point A for a second. Um, I'm going to... Uh, what am I going to do? Oh, uh, I'm going to define uh, now these poly numbers. T, N of X translate to be equal to uh, the, the truncation of the cubic in x plus r, uh, truncating in x. So uh, let's say that t0 translate, let's actually just define this function first. What happens when we just uh, add something to the argument? Uh, we can see here that it basically moves the point defined by capital R on the function, on the poly number, to the origin, going here. And uh, it, it, uh, it's an isometry. This translation is an isometry. So it moves all of the points uh, rigidly, um, as we can sort of just see here. So when we take the truncate of the cubic, uh, let's, let's do this. Again, the, the first truncation isn't that interesting. Uh, Sorry, the zero truncation. If we compare it to the uh, one where we haven't translated, it's actually the same exact horizontal line. But if we take the first truncation, the one where the more interesting things start to happen, we see that uh, we basically shifted the origin. It's it's the tangent line now uh, here. Um, though this is still pretty restricted, and and if we uh, take the second truncation of the translated argument. We'll get that as well. Let's turn this off. All right, so we've now managed to sort of shift the origin, but it, it's not exactly in the complete generality that we would like. Um, we could, if we had a um, a polynomial in the plane, then we could just subtract r from its argument, and that would drag r and then the the polynomial to this, and then we could truncate it there. Um, but let's, uh, let's do it a little bit differently. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but for now we're, we're able to just shift the point of tangency. Um, but I'm going to turn these off. Oops. Leave this back on. Turn this off. Turn these points off. Let's even just hide these and stop this from moving. Okay. Um, so while that's going on, uh, I'm going to do a quick review of the binomial theorem just because when we translate this thing, it's one thing to say, all right, computer, pass in these new values. But if we wanted to do it by hand, and I'm interested in being able to do it by hand, uh, computers are awesome, but uh, I don't want to cover up anything with the power of computers. Um, so aside from truncation, the computations done with the binomial theorem is the engine of this method and the results it produces. The general form of the binomial theorem is a plus b to the n is equal to the sum of zero, uh, k equals 0 to n of n choose k times a to the n minus k times b to the k. Uh, 
this is where some of the basic counting comes in. Uh, it's very beautiful how you get this uh, generality. But uh, the basic cases that we'll be concerned with is a plus b to the 0 equals 1, a plus b to the first is equal to a plus b, a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, a plus b cubed is equal to a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. And uh, I actually made this graphic um, for some students, but I, I thought it would be appropriate to share it here. Uh, this sort of just gives you an understanding of uh, the the affine geometry behind the arithmetic going on here. Uh, not so much the counting, but um, this is a, a nice thing to stare at. I will also make this available to people if you want to uh, try to figure out that document. But anyway, um, so using this information, we can say that the cubic of x plus r, this is a little x and a little r, this is just a general thing, uh, we'll be using this more later, um, is equal to a plus b times x plus r plus or plus c times x plus r squared plus d times x plus r cubed. Basically, we just replaced the argument with the new argument, and then we use the binomial theorem to expand it out here. When I said the binomial theorem is a linear operation, mostly I mean with respect to if we put a coefficient out here, then the coefficients are basically unchanged. The distributive law just carries them over. Um, so uh, we're going to do something now. Uh, that is more useful to physicists, maybe. This is something that Newton probably would have loved to see. Um, so, uh, we're going to rearrange cubic of x plus r in terms of r to get a plus bx plus cx squared plus dx cubed plus this quantity right here, b plus 2cx plus 3dx squared times r. You, If you've taken calculus before, you might recognize it, but uh, we'll just uh, keep going, and then you'll get this quantity c plus 3dx times r squared plus d times r cubed. So we're going to define a parameter x and substitute it uh, in here for lowercase x, so this is capital X, lowercase x, to be a fixed value for the x-axis, uh, this one right here. All right, and then we're going to define a parameter r to be a change in the parameter r unit polynomial. So this is lowercase r. Before we had lowercase x, capital R, lowercase x for like input space, capital X, or capital R for uh, a fixed thing. We're going to sort of uh, reverse that here. So we're going to have a capital X for like some sort of fixed thing and then a lowercase r for something that's varied. But I say that now I'm going to break those rules during uh, uh, one of these uh, demonstrations I'm going to do. But anyway, so we're going to define the poly number uh, truncation of n uh, of r of the cubic to be the truncation in r of the expression arranged in r. We don't have to uh, arrange it in r to truncate it, but it's, it's much more nice. So uh, we can take say t zero r of cubic is equal to a plus b capital X plus c x squared plus d capital X cubed. And notice it's a zero truncation in r. There's no terms in r here, so that uh, pretty much satisfies what we understand about the truncation operation. I'm going to copy paste this into GeoGebra. As far as GeoGebra concerned, this is just a number. We're not. We're just uh, combining these specific values in a specific way to get this thing. Uh, let's even just stop this so that's more clear. I'll wait for it to be something that looks nice. All right, there we go. And uh, the first truncation here, it's uh, the previous truncation plus all the terms of R is what we would expect from the definition of truncation. And uh, let's put that in here. Again, it's just going to be recognized as a number. Um, and then this is the second truncation. I, I might, please forgive my mistakes if I make them uh, zero truncation, first truncation, second truncation, as you can see by this number eight. So um, we have these three numbers here. And uh, now we're going to find some tangent traces. I, I just wanted to put these numbers in here. Uh, so, given this cubic, la di da di da, uh, we're going to define the point t truncation x and r to be the specific point for a fixed x and liable to changes in r. So, um, first we're going to copy and paste this one in here. What this is going to do is, for whatever value of x, it's just going to, uh, here, let's see if we can move it, just going to output the point on the cubic for x, right? So it just goes along like this. Nothing too interesting here. I'm actually going to turn off this cubic function. Uh, hmm. Well, let's let's just keep going. All right, and then let's let's set r equal to zero really quick. All right, and then let's copy and paste this. and this. All right, so we are uh, 
so far nothing appears to have happened but let's uh let's make these different colors so let's make this one red and this one blue and then we can move X anywhere let's move X like right here and then let's turn on the traces of these things okay so what is a trace um, basically the the point is going to put down a stamp of where it is and if we vary R we can see that the traces come out with these tangents they, they basically make images of the tangent um, this is pretty interesting information uh, I'm going to turn off this uh, T2 right here just for a second and uh, let's get rid of the traces if you just uh, nudge it a little bit you'll draw erase traces let's uh let's put a vector from here to here let's put that there let's turn off the trace of this let's turn on the trace of this here right uh, I'll come back to this I actually skipped ahead but whatever and let's uh, turn off this trace let's put that over here let's turn this off let's turn its trace on what is this point Oh, that's a trace. Okay. All right. And then we're just going to nudge this around. All right. So if this is probably particularly useful to physicists, uh, we got a tangent vector to this thing. So as this uh, path goes down, uh, we'll, we'll get a tangent vector to it. That's a, like I said, Newton probably would have loved this. Um, but I, I don't think modern linear algebra was really around when cubic or when Newton was doing his stuff. But uh, notice that we can uh, change this value of r, and all it does is it changes the uh, the quadrants of the vector. If you don't know the quadrants is, you can also think the length of the vector. But uh, I prefer thinking of the quadrants is basically the length squared. Um, and uh, let's just set that to one. It's very nice to just set it to one. Um, and uh, I'm just going to leave this thing animating. Let's turn off its trace, uh, and let's even just turn off this thing. Know that the vector is from this point to this point. Uh, nice amazing look at that tangent vectors uh, we didn't we didn't even do that much all we did is uh, truncate an R and we fixed R even though I said that it would be our input space I, I know I lied uh, it would be our input space if we held X fixed I'll wait for it to be back on the screen and then we turn these points on and then we vary R and that will give us the new parabola so R is sort of like the the fake x-axis right here for these things. Um, but ignoring that, uh, let's just set r to a positive value and then let this vary again. Um, so yeah, uh, that that is uh, some pretty nice stuff. I went a little bit out of order. Um, so we defined the, the tangent vector. Um, let's talk about some notation real quick. Notation is very important. So um, the cubic of x plus r. We've solved it in terms of r. Um, I'm going to define cubic of x plus r this way uh, to be also be equal to d0 uh, times x, uh, sorry, not times x, of x, d0 of x, d1 of x times r plus d2 of x times r squared times d3 of x r cubed. And if we just compare these two de definitions, um, then we see that d0 of x is equal to a plus bx plus cx squared plus dx cubed. Uh, then d1 of x is going to equal uh, b plus 2cx plus 3dx squared. If you take in calculus, you might recognize that this is the derivative of our original thing. d2 of x is going to be um, c plus uh, 3dx. Uh, and we, we're going to call this the first subderivative, or the quadratic approximation. And uh, this is not quite the derivative of the derivative. Um, this is uh, the second derivative divided by 2. Uh, and then here, d3 of x is just going to be d. Um, this is going to be, uh, these definitions will be more fluid in the future. Um, basically, uh, this x here tells you um, what the variable inside is. And then this 3 tells you to what degree uh, that you've collected it in terms of will be. And we'll, we'll see like a, a symmetric but alternate version of this as well. Um, and uh, these quantities appear in the Taylor series of, uh, this is just for people who already sort of have some preconceptions about calculus. These quantities appear in the Taylor series of this cubic. In fact, um, we'll see that this is very closely connected to the theory of Taylor series. So um, in general, 
dn of x equals x to the k, uh, sorry, dn of x of x to the k is equal to n choose k times x to the n minus k. Uh, there's just some counting right there. And uh, it, this is a linear thing that we can apply to something like this. So if we have a times x to the b plus c times x to the d, then that's going to be a times uh, the derivative or subderivative of this thing plus c times the derivative or subderivative of this thing. So it's linear, uh, which is really nice. So now that we have the notation, let's uh, define this vector that we did right here, call it gradient. Uh, it goes from this point to this point. Um, and uh, if we subtract these two points, then uh, we get this thing. So let's copy and paste that. Basically, it's it's the same vector. I've just moved it to the origin by subtracting these two points. Um, and we'll notice that basically the 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 for this one centered at the origin, its coordinates are r, because we have x plus r minus x, so that gets us r, and then t one r cubic, and that's equal to d one of x uh, times r. If we look at the definition of the truncation, uh, t one in r of cubic is just going to be this thing right here. T zero is going to be this thing right here. So if we subtract uh, this from this whole thing, then we're just going to be left with this right here. Um, so yeah, uh, this times r. So uh, we observed what happens when we uh, fix r and vary x. We get these very, very nice tangent vectors. Um, and uh, what is the slope of the vector? So the slope is defined as rise over run. Uh, so if we take this, that's the rise right here, divided by the run right here, we just get a uh, the derivative. We get the derivative of the cubic polynomial. I want you I want you to think about that for a second though. What did we do? We literally only just translated the, the polynomial. This comes up in the, the classical definition of the derivative. Uh, and then we just truncated it. Uh, you could say that the classical definition of the derivative is sort of just a way to try to isolate this quantity, but um, you get into some philosophical concerns with uh, infinitesimals or limits or stuff. Here, here we've done it in a completely algebraic break way. We've gotten the slope of the tangent vector. Uh, but let's not stop here. We're going to uh, use the, this tangent vector to find the slope of the tangent line. So let's uh, just pause this right here and take this thing right here. So we have two points. With two points, we can define a line. So right here, nope, that's a segment. I don't want a line. Go from here to here. Now we have the tangent line. For any value of r that's not 0, see that? It's not 0. It's impossible to define a unique line with one point. Uh, but for any non-zero value of r, we can have a tangent line right here. Um, so what is the slope of this tangent line? Uh, we're going to expect it to be the same slope as the vector, but let's, let's try to figure that out. So uh, convenience set r equal to 1. It, it doesn't really matter. It just makes r disappear from our computations. Uh, and then we're going to use uh, one of these things. So given two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, the line joining those two points is this formula right here. Um, that's a, a result from Cartesian geometry. I'm not really going to uh, develop it here. Basically, you take this minus this times x times uh, plus this minus this, sorry, this minus this, and then did I write it backwards? No, no, uh, this minus this plus this minus this. I, I'm sorry, I had a brain moment, a uh, brain fart there. Uh, so this minus this times x plus this minus this times y plus uh, this quantity right here, you might recognize as a determinant. So this times this minus this times this. And that equals zero. So that's going to be the line joining them. Uh, you can verify that if you just take these two points. Um, so the line between those two points is going to be cubic minus the first truncation in R of the cubic times x plus x plus R uh, minus x times y plus x times t1 R of cubic minus x plus R times cubic of x equals zero. Uh, and then we're going to simplify this. So comp compactly we get um, uh, negative d1x of r plus uh, 
sorry, uh, negative d1x of uh, d, the derivative in x of r times x plus r times y is equal to, uh, or sorry, plus a, capital X times t1 r cubic minus x plus r cubic of x is equal to zero. It's kind of a mouthful. Um, anyway, you can check my math. Uh, if you put it into slope intercept form, you subtract this, uh, negative, negative cancels. Um, and you subtract this uh, as well, this quantity right here. This is just a constant. Um, and then you divide by r here, so we're going to get y is equal to the first, uh, the derivative of x, or the, the cubic, times x minus some constant. Um, and the slope of this line is going to be this, so it has the same slope as the tangent vector. Uh, but uh, we're not going to really focus on the slope. The slope is important information, of course, of course. Uh, I. I mean, I've just shown how to get the slope of the tangent vector. Like, I, I don't think I really need to justify how important the slope is past that point. There's many people who use that in their daily uh, practical lives. But um, this is kind of like the tree in the forest. We don't want to we don't want to lose sight of the whole forest. Even though this is a very nice tree, there are many other trees. Um, so uh, this is this is about halfway through the video uh, in terms of like uh, stuff that you should be concerned about. I'm going to uh, just take all of this off of the screen, and uh, that was one way to find the tangent line. Uh, we might even just move x a little bit again, so we have a tangent line. Um, if we uh, took this thing right here and we made another point for a different r value, uh, then we would get three points and we could define the tangent parabola through it. But that's kind of annoying, you know? It, first we generate three points, and then we... Uh, uh, then we have to uh, use some sort of uh, formula to find the line or the parabola through them, and that's a lot of work. Is there a better way is basically the question. And uh, so I'll show you that better way. It's, it's much, it's, it's beautiful. I love, I really love math. This is one of the, my favorite results um, in math as well. So we're going to start with the cubic. Let's say this one. And we're going to translate it by R, this R right here. And uh, so, if we just plug in this thing right here, uh, for whatever r, that's just going to give us another, it's going to give us the exact same uh, cubic, basically, uh, just shifted as we've seen. Uh, so we're going to collect terms uh, of x to the n this time. So previously we connected uh, terms of r to some power, but uh, this time we're going to do uh, collecting terms of x. So we get this thing right here. So all these things in r, this is the previous quantity that we saw before is the derivative, except all the x's are replaced with r's, and the x is here. That is because of the symmetry of the binomial theorem, and the same thing happens here. The symmetry of the binomial theorem really is uh, powering this thing. So the final step, this is all we have to do. So given this, translate it by r, we get this thing. Collect terms of x, you get this thing. Set it x equal to x minus r. This might seem like a really trivial thing. You might say, Corbin, we're, we, you translated it, you untranslated it, but... Uh, uh, we are uh, gonna gonna keep going. So basically, in the argument of this cubic, we're gonna have x minus r plus r. The r's cancel, and we get cubic of x. Uh, I like to rewrite this as cubic of x semicolon r, uh, just to just to show that the semicolon literally means that we have taken x, we translated it in r, and then we subtracted r back again. But because we uh, uh, oh, the semicolon also means that we use the binomial theorem to expand it. So then we get this thing. We replace uh, this x right here with x minus r. Replace this x squared with x minus r squared. Replace this x cubed with x minus r cubed. That's the only difference. Uh, this can be recognized as the Taylor series of the cubic. Uh, usually the Taylor series definition is given in terms of limits, but if you actually evaluated it, uh, you would get this thing. Um, and uh, this can be undone. So this really is equal to the cubic of x for any value of r. It's going to be the same exact thing. So let's let's test that out. Um, let's copy, paste. All right. So it just gave us the same exact thing. We change r, nothing happens. That makes sense. You know, we we translated it by r, then we translated it back by negative r. Um, so we shouldn't expect it to move. So you might say Corbin, Abraxamus. Those those are synonyms. Abraxamus. You, you, we haven't really accomplished anything except making this more difficult to compute. But uh, 
let's see what happens when we uh, when we truncate in terms of x minus r to the n. So if we do this, this is the zero truncation. Oh, oh, that's a point. Um, let's see, I'm going to actually get rid of these things so that GeoGebra doesn't freak out on me. Hopefully, one day the notation will be better. Um, and then let's delete this number e right here. All right, so copy, paste. Uh, that's just going to be at the value of r negative two, the the y value right here. So it's a constant line. Uh, let's even just embed a point here that is the intersection of these two things. Nope, that's not quite what I wanted. Here. Let's see, will this? No, no. Do I have to zoom in? <laughs> this is awkward. Oh, where did that go? All right, I'm not going to bother. Not going to bother. So whatever x value of r, whatever r value is, you take that x value and you output it here, you get this thing. Not very interesting, uh, but let's see what happens when we take the first truncation in x minus r. That's just, that's straight up the equation of the tangent line. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set r just to be animated. That's the equation of the tangent line. That's literally what we're looking for. This is one of the basic motivating things of differential calculus. No limits were involved. Um, we did it completely algebraically. So let's let's try to understand what's going on here. So this is obviously the uh, the height of the the cubic at some value r, as you can see right here. Then this thing is going to be the equation or the slope of the tangent line, right? We we've already demonstrated that. What does this x minus r do? Well, ooh, let's undo that. Uh, x minus r is 0 precisely when uh, x is equal to r. So if we just took this thing right here, let's copy that and paste that. Uh, you can see uh, th this orange line, that's a not a good color. Let's see, let's make that red. Let's see what goes on there. You notice that it's parallel to this one. But wherever r is, it's 0. So basically what happens is we have a line passing through r on the x-axis with the slope of the tangent line, and then we add the height to it, and it brings it up here. So I'm just going to delete that for now. All right? Then if we take the second truncation in r, uh, sorry, x minus r, we get the equation of the tangent parabola. Real exciting stuff. Look at that. That is a nice tangent parabola. Really, really excited with that. Um, that uh, for whatever point, uh, let's say point r comma cubic of r. Whoop, you gotta put that parentheses right there. We got the tangent parabola at that point. Uh, let's move it closer. All right. Um, so, uh, and then if we just take the third truncation, that's just going to give us the original cubic. Uh, there's, there's nothing really much more to do. There's nothing to say about the, the third truncation. Um, so, there you have it. A better way to find the equation of the tangent line, as well as higher dimensional analogs. Super easy. It's one of the easiest things in the world to do. Uh, almost trivial. I'm very surprised that uh, people hadn't noticed this earlier. Um, though, a lot of mathematics is thought about more mechanically than algebraically in the past, um, you know, uh, you can just ask Apollonius, uh, but um, this is a good time, this is a good time. So we want to be able to do some very, very basic calculus things. Uh, well, I guess we have to talk about some notational symmetry that I mentioned earlier. Um, the cubic of x uh, parameterized by r, uh, we're, we're going to define it the same exact way, except we're going to place this x with r, and so this r is indicative that we have uh, this thing going on. It's the same exact thing. Uh, in general, we have these statements. I literally just copied and pasted this and just changed the x's to r's and vice versa. It's linear as well. Uh, notice the, the, the symmetry in the notation. Again, thank you binomial theorem. I love you. Uh, you have done a, a great job at letting us do this. Uh, so calculus things. We want to find local mins and maxes. 
Notice that at a local min or max, uh, so let's turn off this. So this is a, a min, or this is a max, and this is a min. If we get real close to it, the tangent line turns into the the tangent constant, and as well here. All right, uh, let's see if it'll let me. Can't quite get it there, but it, it basically degenerates into it. So um, uh, let's turn that off. So we have the condition that there's going to be a minimum or a maximum when the uh, tangent line degenerates into the tangent constant uh, right here um, when this condition holds. So we can uh, rewrite this thing. We know that it's just recursively defined as the previous truncation plus a little extra more. All right, and uh, so we can subtract this quantity from both sides, and we get this thing. X is our input space, so there's there's not really we're not concerned. We're trying to solve for what value of r does this, so we can just divide by x minus r. We recognize that this is the de for the derivative of the cubic, um, and so we get that there is a minimum or a maximum precisely when the derivative or the slope of the tangent line is equal to zero. Uh, very very simple. All right. What about uh, points of inflection? So when does this thing change concavity? Let's turn this back on. All right. And so we notice that at the point of concavity, the tangent parabola gets very, very close to the tangent line. In fact, at the point of inflection, it will degenerate completely into the tangent line. This isn't probably the best uh, cubic to show that on. So let's, let's try to find a, di a different cubic. Oh, there it goes. Still not, still not the one that I want to show though. Let's just go with this one. All right, it gets very close to the tangent line. Pretty close. That uh, you, you. I, I don't want to say you're just gonna have to believe me. What I'll say is, uh, experiment on this. Test it empirically. So. Uh, we can do the same thing here. Uh, when the second truncation is equal to the first, so when the tangent parabola becomes the tangent line, there is a point of inflection. So then we could rewrite this thing in terms of the previous one plus some a little bit extra. We can subtract it from both sides. Again, x is our input space, so there's not really anything that we're doing with that x we're trying to solve for a value of r. Uh, so we divide by x minus r squared, and we get uh, this thing. And that's equivalent to saying, when is the first subderivative equal to zero? So there's a point of inflection when the first subderivative is equal to zero. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have prior calculus experience, you might notice that the second uh, the subderivative is equal to the derivative of the derivative divided by two, or uh, in classical notation, cubic double prime of x divided by two. Um, but, 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 you know, higher derivatives, if we, if we just t repeatedly take the derivative, you might say, okay, that's that's the that's the acceleration, that's the jerk. Uh, those aren't really the primary objects here. It, as we go more and more, we'll come to appreciate that the subderivatives are the primary objects. That is what we should be concerned about. Um, if we multiplied this by two and then stuck it in here, we would no longer have the tangent parabola. Um, so this is what this is the quantity that gives us the tangent parabola. All right, this uh, video is almost done. Um, we're going to uh, Want to talk about one more thing? It's called the prettiest theorem in calculus. So the theorem is, uh, given a cubic function x, all of the tangent parabolas are completely disjoint. All right, let's 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 try to uh, let's try to frame that in some meaningful way. All right, uh, uh, near the origin, um, or near the point of inflection. So. Let's take the trace of this, and then let's just let R move around. All of these parabolas do not touch each other. They are completely disjoint. Let's, uh, let's do a different cubic and test that. Whoop, I should turn off this trace. Let's even do it. So this barely looks like a cubic, right? 
But if we take a trace of it, and then we see that they're still all disjoint. They don't touch each other at all. Not in the complex numbers, not in some irrational number. They're all disjoint. You can do this for any cubic. Uh, it's, I think it's pretty clear why this is a pretty theorem in calculus. I did not name it this way, though um, uh, I am definitely parroting the opinion of the person who did name it this way, and uh, I, I tend to agree. So, yeah, that, that's, that's some really nice stuff. I, I am a big fan of that. Let's prove it. So, uh, we have this cubic, and we've, uh, we've done the Taylor expansion of it in R, so we get this thing. What we can say is that we have an error term. This, this parabola is always going to be uh, separated from, like, it's going to be different from the cubic function by this amount right here. Uh, that's what we truncated away. So uh, basically we can say here that uh, the second truncation is equal to the original function minus everything that we threw away. Um, and so Let's, let's pick two values of r, r1 and r2, and let's say they're different. So if we have two different values of r1 and r2, they refer to two different parabolas. And then what we can say is if two tangent, distinct tangent parabolas uh, intersect, then we can set this thing equal to each other. All right, so if we set them equal to each other, so we basically have this thing in terms of r1 is equal to this thing in terms of r2. Uh, and we can subtract this from both sides, and we can multiply by the negative, so we'll get this thing right here. And that's the error terms. They're equal to each other. Um, but because that this is an odd degree, you divide by uh, d, you take away this thing, uh, you get x minus r1 is equal to x minus r2, cancel the x's, cancel the negative signs, you get r1 equals r2. But this violates that the parabolas are distinct. They, they intersect the, the cubic at different places. Um, so therefore, uh, the tangent parabolas of a cubic function only intersect with themselves. Uh, and we verify that this is true. Uh, but this is the prettiest theorem in calculus. Again, we can just pick a random cubic. Let's turn that off real quick. All right, just this is a random cubic. It, has, it doesn't even have integer values. And we do this. All right. All right, so uh, just a summary, quick summary of finding tangent equations to a cubic. Translate by R. Uh, so you have the cubic of x plus r, expand with the binomial theorem, collect terms of x to the k, set x equal to x minus r, then we get this thing happening in the argument and we denote it this way, and then we truncate, uh, that should be an n right there, uh, to your desired degree of approximation. So that's it for this video, uh, just, some, just some last comments. Uh, in the future I will be doing calculus on a general cubic by poly number, which allows us to find tangents to general curves in 2D and surfaces in 3D. I also intend to go further into tangents of rational functions, parametric curves, and of functions with rational exponents, so like y is equal to the square root of x. Uh, I also really recommend anyone who deals with calculus to consider this method, this viewpoint, uh, be they educators, engineers, pure mathematicians, economists, computer scientists, or many others. A lot of people use calculus, and this is something that I think they would benefit from seeing, uh, even though it is so trivial. Uh, if you want to understand how you can do this sort of thing with uh, integral calculus, um, then I recommend looking into uh, Norman J. Weilberger Algebraic Calculus 1. Uh, that's a, a program that's happening in 2018. Uh, it's probably going to be the, one of the landmark events of 2018, of which I'm in participating in, um, but I, I'm going to plug that. Uh, you should check it out. Um, this method is very exciting because uh, really we, we, we're dealing with rational points here on the computer. Uh, you could deal with real numbers, whatever those are, or you could even just deal with integers. If your cubic is defined entirely in terms of integers, then the tangent lines will also be defined entirely in terms of integers. Um, and so we could, uh, we only need a commutative ring. We need it to be commutative so that the binomial theorem works. Um, but this is valid over general field, and in the future I will show some examples of this in finite fields. Uh, very, very interesting subject. Um, and apparently, uh, historically, this approach was elucidated by Lagrange in his book, Theory of Analytic Functions, though I have not read it. Um, and uh, that's all for this video. May you find the joy of learning. Abraximus out.